Right, good morning, guys. Um, welcome to this live trading. Um, it's Wednesday, it's busy, it's volatile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you straight onto the ladder straight away. Um, we'll go back up to the top in a minute, but let's just talk about on the ladders, yeah? We're going to start on the DAX, yeah? Something very interesting. Um, down low, yeah, someone looking for 110 contracts at 50 earlier. Okay, so we can see a little bit of weakness coming into the equities this morning. Um, now, Europe's particularly interesting because obviously the DAX has now got an inside 30 minute candle. So, someone just sitting on the on the ladder here with 50, you know, with 100 lots at 50. So, what I'm going to try and do as we get there, I'm not rushing, I'm not preempting. I'm actually going to enter in, I'm actually going to sell into. Okay, logic is very simple. If someone's going to be panicking on the way down and selling 100 contracts, it's most likely that one, there's going to be stops below the low. But also, too, there's likely to be a little bit of selling to come behind him. So I'm just keeping on that DAX. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, in fact, what I'll do is just switch these two around so we can keep an eye on that. That's kind of where I'm looking. Uh, obviously, also focusing heavily on the dollar this morning. Um, continued theme of dollar weakness. Um, the interesting dynamic this morning, however, is that we are actually seeing the yen um, a little bit bit up. And that's 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 the crucial one for the equities. Um, you know, if we come up to the uh, the Reuters screen, yeah, we can just see um, the yen performance this morning, and that that's that's crucial for the equities. That was that was the one thing for me holding the equities back yesterday from from a real, you know, sort of a, a real shit out yesterday was that yen selling off. So you can just see the yen early this morning is is taking back a little bit of that beating from yesterday. Again, it's very marginal at the moment, but the yen is pretty much up across the board, uh, except for against the euro. So I'm just watching that yen this morning. I think if that yen starts to go a bit up, uh, I think these equities are in a, in a, in a world of trouble. Um, so just going to keep an eye on that dynamic. Um, other than that, not a great deal to talk about in terms of uh, you know data. We're obviously waiting for some, some ECB Moshe's comments. Um, what we're going to do a little bit today is I actually want you guys to watch the ladder quite a lot. Um, so I don't want you to focus too much on your screens. Just listen to what I'm saying to you. I'll navigate you as I go through various markets, whether it's the DAX, whether it's the pound, whether it's the buns. I will navigate you across the market so you know where I am and what I'm trying to do ultimately. Um, as for the bund, I know a lot of you obviously are bund traders. Right now, for me, when a market has such a big down day like that, you know, I'm, I'm cautious playing in the middle. I'd rather play on the edges, uh, just simply because, you know, in the middle there's just so much churn and going on. So many participants in the market, whether it's fresh shorts, fresh longs, you know, hedging, stopping out, all sorts of things are going on in that bund this morning, and that's what's creating uh, not just the volume. I mean, this is some significant volume in the bunds, uh, but also the volatility. Um, so yeah, if we come back, uh, come back down to the ladders. Um, you know, very briefly, what I just want to just point out is, obviously, looking at this cable. You know, we had a stop run above 50 once yesterday. Um, we've now had a little bit of a, little bit of an outside candle on the hourly chart. So, you know, a lot of you always ask me, you know, when do I pyramid? How do I pyramid? Etc. All that kind of thing. Now, this is a good example of when you want to try and pyramid. Okay, note, I've got the core position. Uh, I've run the core position, I've, you know, I've scaled out of some, but what I'm going to try and do now is I'm actually going to try and n not necessarily add to this position, but I'm actually going to try and recreate a new position, okay? So my original reason for being long is I want to hold this uh, and run it up towards these sort of 78 areas. Now, I've been given a second reason, okay? There's a second technical reason now why I want to buy the market. So in essence, this is a separate trade altogether, okay? I'm going to try and pyramid, try and buy a few more 50, 51, 52, 49s uh, and run that up as well up towards the 78. Okay, so, so key there guys, you know, pyramiding I is a tool, but know when to use it. Okay, don't, don't mess up bad positions, all right? If, if I, I mean, if I do get a fill in and around these 51s, 52s, right, that will have its own stop. I'm not going to run the entire position all the way back. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind. If we just come to the charts very briefly, just keeping one eye on everything at the moment. Um, if we do come up to the charts, just something I want to point out with regards to, um, you know, the, the, the German bunds. Uh, it, it's more, not so much on the price, but well, you could see it on the price because we actually do have a, um, we do have a price um, a gap at the moment. So the overnight gap up at 25 says yet to be filled. But we can see on the yield chart, okay, so this is a yield chart in front of you. We can see obviously the market closed around 35 basis yesterday. And, um, you know, we're uh, currently trading 38. So for me, 
it just feels like you know, I, I don't want to entertain longs, not at high prices. I mean, I can understand the market going higher, but for me, I'm 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 more interested to start looking for shorts once we fill that gap around the uh, 35 and a half. So that's kind of what I'm looking at this morning, uh, as well as obviously that that spread as we spoke about in this morning stream. So I'm keeping a close eye on that 35.4 in terms of price, where that's going to come in. You're looking roughly around the 50, so 163.50. Um, that's more or less where the gap fill will come in the yield chart. Um, so just keep an eye around that area, the 163.50. What I do like to do, obviously, is coincide when I have you know a, an area where I think I want to trade. I want to coincide it with something on the technicals. Okay, so. Uh, we can very clearly see, obviously, that 163.50 comes in in and around those single prints from yesterday afternoon. So, good little spot. A lot of sell side, a lot of initiative yesterday. So, somewhere there, there's going to be a good sell. Uh, but it's a matter of timing now, guys. That's the key uh, towards trading this button today, particularly. It's a matter of timing. Uh, waiting for the flows, waiting for the signal, waiting for the trigger that creates the volatility. Okay, let's come back onto the ladder. Let's uh, zoom in on this DAX now. We are approaching again. Um, now for me, the DAX is quite thin, so rather than, you know, again, you can position yourself in, in good areas of course, but also sometimes you want to play for the fast money, and the DAX is very good for fast money, it's good for stop orders, uh, it's good for a bit of volatility. Okay, so we can see the 112 lot there at the 50s, we're going to hit it into him, and we're filled. Okay, now note the 50s, note where you got filled, note the 50s where you actually got hit, and we're looking for the flush now. Okay, so we can see where you got filled. We're going to put our stop just above him. The 15 and a half, trade for 100. So someone hit 100 there. And we're going to try and run this in and around that this nice little big area, 25. So if we can get through those 25s, we might just get a really big stop out. Obviously, stocks, 90s as well, <laughs> key level. So we're just keeping an eye on the stacks now. See if we can get a little stop run onto those 25s. We're going to leave a few bids down around the 15, see if we can get a little stop run going here, and maybe take some, <coughs> some profits on a, on a stop run. Okay, as I mentioned, obviously stocks, 34.90, quite a key little area. Okay, 90s goes, we should get some punch into those stocks. So we can see a little bit of volume volatility come through in the DAX. Now what we want to see is the volume hold. We want to see the strategy hold. Yeah. Okay. Nice tight stop. If we lose, we're not going to lose much. Okay. If we get this right, we've got open ended down toward 25s. Obviously, at the same time, we are watching that pound in case we can get a little bit of a, an entry on our second trade. Let's just keep an eye on these 90s as well in the stock. See how that market responds in those 90s. Uh, pretty big area in the 90s. Um, you've got DAX at 24s. You know, DAX gets below those 24s today. There's, there's going to be some real venom, some real stop outs. So again, there's real potential in, the, in these equities for some, some really big moves today. I mean, technically, you know, we finally saw that S&P break the 24.28, which is massive. You know, we've got that DAX breaking a key daily trend line. So there's, there's real potential from a technical perspective. The question is, you know, are these flows that we're seeing in the bonds, uh, the flows in the dollar, are they going to, you know, relate to, you know, flows in the equities? That's the question. If they do, you know, equities are on, on for a 1 or 2%, maybe even 3% bruising today. So it's all about what these flows, you know, imply. So what we're looking for is we're just going to keep a close eye on that DAX as it approaches 25s. Okay, 25s is somewhere down here. So we're a good 12 ticks away from that from now. Okay, obviously if that stock starts to go and the stock takes the 90, we're going to try and add another one in the DAX and try and get in ahead of that 25 stop out. Um, once the stops go below 25s, obviously, Recover and uh, we'll wait for the next opportunity. 
I also note, obviously, the, um, the, the, the head of that 110 lots also came on the inside candle break as well, uh, which came at 52 and a half. So we're just going to move that stop slightly up, up onto those 52 and a half, just to make sure we've got the right stop there. For um, obviously we've got quite a few members uh, that have joined us today, so just um, with the questions, guys, you're welcome to ask questions. Um, I won't answer them now. Uh, what I do tend to do is I will. Uh, obviously, I've got I've got no eyes on up on my left top left screen, which is obviously where all the questions will come down. But I will answer those for you later. So the question is just type the questions up now if you have them, and I will answer them later. But let's focus on what's important right now, which is the ladder. The ladder is what we want to watch. We want to see what happens below these 37 and a halves. Now note, the last time we blipped down in the DAX, we got a straight line bit up. Okay, so the price action right there now is not aggressive. Okay, there's no real panic. Um, not yet. Okay. Yen's gone bad, yeah. Okay, so we're going to keep an eye on that yen now. See what that implies for uh, for the equities. But we're going to try and get another one in here. Yeah. Try and get in on another little flush down. Just keep an eye on stocks, 34.90 here. Who's talking? Gold, yeah, 200 lot in the gold as well. If these equities don't respond, man. What's going on here? What's that? Go out? Gold's broken the inside day as well. <laughs> okay, we stopped out of that DAX, unfortunately. Um, Volatility is at an absolute extreme now, guys. So we need to respect <coughs> that. Um, we're just going to work a stop in this uh, cable. We don't want to see it go too much lower, obviously. Um, we'll keep an eye on that DAX. If it does start to offer again, we'll just have to hit it again and uh, hopefully we can re establish the position. Mm. Like 20,000 lots have traded at the shots one point. The interesting thing now, if we look at this um, this pound on this recent little flush down, if I just get a little chart up, okay, we can see that obviously as we came through these 52s, if I just get a little bit of volume up, I can show you that's where the stops came through. So someone just stopped out below those 52s. So for me now, if this cable is going to continue the ascent and continue the way up, uh, we're just going to have to get above those 52s, okay. At the moment, also keeping an eye on this button, a little bit of volume coming through. Um, Again, remember that gap for looking at that 50s. That's where I'm looking for it. You know, what I ideally want is I want a bit of aggression into there. The more aggressive it is going into it, the more aggressive I'm going to be uh, getting into that position. So just keeping an eye on the 50s for that gap for uh, see what happens when you get there. <coughs> right, so 
What I'm going to do is obviously just watch this cable. Let's keep an eye on it now. Uh, it's come down to the 44s. Probably don't want to see it much below that. <coughs> it stops in now. If it gets stopped up, so what? Okay, it's still a winner. Um, it's unfortunate. Timing's a little bit out. But um, what we're going to do is we're just going to stop out onto those 39s. But if we get back above those 52s, uh, that could be game on for, for again, a retest of the highs uh, and hopefully a punch uh, a little bit higher. Chart up into the top left so you guys can see it as well. Make it nice and small. Okay, so we can see the stop went through 52, just a little bit of a weak stop there as well, 52s. Um, so let's see what happens if we get back up with those 52s, see if we get a little bit of that buy side impetus come back into the market. ECB data, seasonally adjusted entry breakdown of loans. On that, yeah, it's gone up again, yeah. So we can see obviously the cable's now coming back down here. If it takes the fours, it's probably going to rush down and it's probably going to come back towards the lows. Um, so we're keeping a close eye on this now. We'll see what happens. Let me see that DAX has gone off it again. Um, so we're going to keep just trying that DAX, keep trying. trying. I think that's the important thing, all right? A lot of the time, you, know, you can be right in terms of direction, you can swing trade, day trade, scalp, and fade, whatever you want to do, but you know, timing is crucial no matter what your strategy is. So you know, we're going to keep an eye on that DAX. It's unfortunate we lost the position where we did, but you know, that's what it's about. It's about managing the risk when the trade opportunity is gone. Okay, um, and I spoke to uh, a friend of mine this morning about you know, shorting DAX up at, you know, at the highs and holding it all day. Okay, that, that's one trade. I mean, if you, if, you know, if you bring, for instance, if I look at my e-money S&Ps, okay, uh, I've cut my size so that I can sit on this trade the whole day. Right? If I get a 20-handle move, you know, that's the job done. Now, that's the strategy I've taken with the S&P because it's closed, because the cash market's shut. It's different now in the DAX, okay, that the cash is open. Um, so I'm trading the, the cash more as a, as a day, or the DAX, as a, as a day trader's market, looking for stops, looking for volume, looking for volatility, looking for follow through. So different strategy, different market, okay, different approach. Um, can be ultimately successful in both, but I've got to choose the right strategy for the right moment. Okay, so we're going to keep an eye on this button now. We're going to see what happens as we go through this high. You can see nice and, nice and volatile through the highs, quite a bit of stops coming through as well. Um, so we're going to see what we do once we get uh, through these 36s. Just keep in mind those 50s. That was the key little area we're focusing on this morning. So we're going to try the stacks again, try and get in, see if we can get some stops below the low. Again, note the risk, guys. I'd love to have three on, but you know I've got to manage the risk ultimately. I'm selling into lows. I'm looking for stop runs. Um, again, different ways to skin a cat. 
you know, if I was position trading much higher and I could add into position, ideally I would, but again, we've got to manage risk and we've got to make sure we focus on the timing of the trades. stop in the DAX, see if we've got the timing right here. See those flows coming into the lows. Okay, we can see bonds put up. We can see if we can uh, try and have a run at that low again. Remember 25s, that's the key area. That's where the big stops are going to come in. That's where we're going to get more aggressive. Okay, the closer we get to that level, the more aggressive we'll come. You know, if we can sell, you know, all we're playing for is stops, okay. I'm, I'm not swing trading the DAX yet. I'm playing for volatility. I'm playing for momentum and I'm playing for flow. So every time it you know, goes bit up, I'm going to look to play for some stops. If I get the stops, I'm going to get out. Um, and the big prize is the 25s, guys. Get, get below those 25s or the 90s in the stocks. And that's where the big prize is. That's where the cheese is. That's where you're going to get the fast money. And that's, that's the day trading strategy that I'm employing right now in the DAX. Um, again, like I said, different story in the e uh, different story in the cable, different, different strategies, different markets, different approaches based on what I'm ultimately trying to achieve. Okay. So you can see this DAX are not quite ready yet, it's still just struggling a little bit. Uh, a lot of two-way trade, okay? <laughs> the real good moves are going to come the lower we go, okay? We haven't had a good move in this DAX yet. Still a lot of two-way trade, um, which is not ideal. Uh, obviously, bear in mind we are down a percent in the day, so... You know, that's uh, to be expected. Okay, so stop's taken. I'm going to try and offer it up higher again now. Okay, so that's all we're looking for, just constantly taking those stops. Now, note, remember what I said to you, the big, big level in the DAX is the 25s. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to be a little bit cheeky. And we're actually going to use a stop order entry again. We're going to try and hit the DAX into the lows, yeah, uh, and see if we can get those uh, those stops going. Okay, so just below this low, guys. That's the key. If you're watching this DAX, this is you know all we're doing is employing uh, a stop hunt, yeah, stop run. We're just identifying where the short-term stops and long-term stops and the bigger positions are in the market, uh, and we're trying to take advantage of that. So we're going to try one last time here, yeah, see if we can get some stops. This time, however, we're going to leave a whole bunch of bits in the market and make sure that we uh, that we're in before the stop goes. Again, if we're going to manage risk, we're just going to keep that stop nice and tight. This is momentum, guys. So, you know, you don't need big stops here. You just want to play with the momentum. Uh, you know, if you get caught, so what? Um, you know, the important thing is you're going with the flow, going with the momentum, and we're gone again. That's okay. Uh, we're losing small bits. Uh, but when we get our stops, when we get our big sort of, you know, sort of stop a movement, you know, 20, 30, 40 ticks, you know, that's when we can sit back and say, okay, well, the job's done now. Um, you know, we've done the trade, this is probably the fourth time we've done this trade. Uh, we've taken, what, three small losses or two small losses and then, you know, uh, two winners. So, net, net result, you know, we get one more, yeah, and, and, you know, we've won on three and lost on two. But the ticks is, is what counts, okay, and that's why we manage the risk. Um, so just keep that factor, that into your analysis, you know. Not all strategies are winning strategies, you know. I'd hate to, to go on air, yeah, and say to you guys that I make money on every trade. I can guarantee you I don't. Um, you know, I lose money just as often as, as the next guy, but at the end of the day, it's about he who can lose the least, um, you know, when it's not quite working, and then when it is working, you know, the guy that can get in the most, um, you know. So what I'm going to do is, um, we're at 25 past year, we're going to just have a look qu quickly at some questions. Um, I want you guys just to keep focusing on the DAX, um, you know, just keep an eye on this DAX so I can show you that potentially what that one last little stop's going to look like below that low. 
So we can see no note there, guys. Here's a, here's a good example of where, you know, as much as I think the DAX is going to go a lot lower today, I, can't, I mean, I'm, I'm talking maybe another 100 ticks lower. You know, that's not my game in this market right now. You know, I can, I can have an opinion on, you know, you ask me, I've got limits in 15, 16 markets, guys. I trade across bonds, equities, currencies, commodities. I trade everywhere, right? But I'll have a view on something, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm in the trade, okay? I might be bearish equities, but you don't see me short now, okay? Uh, I'm bearish S&P and I'm short, okay? But I've got a very specific approach to that market where I understand the risk. Right? So it's not always necessarily a one-size-fits-all. You know, if you're, if you're a breakout trader, don't feel you have to always be a breakout trader in one market. Okay, become a breakout trader where the breakout is in the conditions uh, that suits your style, that suits your approach to a breakout. Right? In volatile conditions where the market's thin and the yen's all over the show and the markets are choppy, you know, bang, I know being a breakout trader is going to pay. Right? But if these were docile, boring, sideways markets, I guarantee you I would not be leaving, leaving stop limit orders in the market. Okay? It's just not worth the risk. So that's how you got to assess it, guys. Assess your strategy based on the market conditions. Okay. Got a sec. I'm going to have a look up some of the questions. Morning, Angela, Eugenie. Uh, how are you guys doing? Yeah, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So there's no real questions up at the moment. Um, okay, so we've seen Angela saying she likes the gold. Um, okay, gold's broken obviously yesterday's inside there, but that, that's a key, guys. Um, you know, keep an eye on that gold. It, it, yes, it took stops and it broke the inside day. Um, uh, you know, but just watch now how that gold responds. Don't forget we are in an environment where people are selling yen and they, there seems to be a, a, a two-way trade on the gold at the moment. Okay, so again, if we come across the screen here, we're going to employ again a stop limit entry. We're going to try and go for some stops in this euro now. If you've been watching the euro this morning, I'm going to bring it across here for you. You'll notice every time the euro goes up through the highs, it's going five or six pips and then very quickly coming back. Okay, so again, what we're going to do is we're going to play the strategy that the market is giving us. Okay, so same strategy as DAX, looking for some stops, looking for some run up to the upside. Uh, very different, okay, note how I'm willing to sit in the cable, sit long the entire day, uh, until tonight, until I get my move, up until this, you know, sort of 79, 80 area. I'm willing to do that, right? Def almost a similar market, okay, the currency markets are very similar, but the strategy I'm going to employ, I have to be different, okay, because I'm trying to treat, achieve two different things. Um, so what we're going to do again, we're just going to watch this euro, we're going to try and buy through the highs, see if we can get some stops, uh, and then go from there. Okay, obviously just got one eye on the buns as well, I'm just going to move this across. Um, if we get to those 50s, hopefully we can execute on them, otherwise <coughs> uh, we can go from there. As you can see, um, what's really, really good now about that DAX, how it's bounced, if I just bring this across very briefly, um, I'll bring it across the screen, and if I just show that to you, okay, that's what we call a V-shaped recovery, okay, so what you've got is you've got one time framing all the way down, and then you've got the equal and opposite and opposite direction, okay, that's quite a bullish reversal that in the DAX, so again, note, I'm not necessarily saying it's a buy or that I'm bullish, I'm just turning from being, uh, you know, sort of overly bearish to a little more neutral now. Okay, that's quite a strong reversal, but this is really good auctioning, guys. This uh, this auction we've seen off that low in the DAX now makes me very excited for when we do go back there. Okay, uh, I'm really interested now uh, in when the DAX gets back below there. If we get back below there sometime this afternoon, I will be extremely, I'll be more aggressive through that low simply because of that auction process I've seen off the low. Okay. Yes, a lot of you are going to look at this now and say there's a potential for an inverse head and shoulders, which is correct. Okay, so we've picked up on something at the same time. Note, we've been playing a little bit of a, a breakout strategy all morning, and we've just now identified a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders in the short-term time frame. Let's let it form that right shoulder, and then uh, we can get involved in that DAX, try and play for a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders play. So we'll keep an eye on that, bring that across if it does come, come into play in a few minutes' time. That's no problem, Angela. Thanks for the comment. Um, yeah. 
Feel free, guys. We've got another. We've got another ten minutes here, so feel free to ask those questions. Um, I'm just going to keep clicking away and talking anyway. So you just ask those questions, and uh, I'll just get on with the job of it and kind of just navigate you through what I'm trying to do ultimately. Okay, so nice strong but up in that box. Okay, what we're going to try and do now is we're going to try something a little bit cheeky here. Okay, we can see if we go back to that dax, if we come back to when we were up here around about quarter past nine. Right, in this little area here, we can see that on the ladder, but you can also see on the footprint, there's quite a bit of absorption here. Okay, so there's, a, you know, there's quite a big seller that stepped in just to hold the market up around that 53.54. So that's a pretty important area now for the market. You know, the shorts need to hold on to that 50 to 54s. If that goes, you could see a little bit of a short term run up to the upside. So we're aware that the, you know if we if we did get a DAX ladder up, if we just come up to the charts very briefly, um, I can show you what those stops will look like. Okay, so we can see the delta on the day, and this is where a cumulative delta can be a little bit um, misleading in a sense. Is that it, it's not necessarily always a delta that indicates positioning, but maybe more positioning where you know the markets maybe held key areas you've seen an interaction between buyers and sellers so what we can see if we came back into this area was you know around that 50s if i just put nice two red lines there we can see that this morning you know early on the market was kind of defending that area you can see eight o'clock we defended that area we then defended it again when the cash first came in and we kept defending that area once it took it notice where the market came back to okay so use the the support uh, and turned it and flipped it into resistance. Okay, now in a distribution day, these can be particularly good stop out areas. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to keep a close eye on the exact price, 55 and a half. That's where we're going to just pay attention in the event that we do come bid up. If we take that out, you know, we're probably going to see quite a fast little money move back up towards the 70s. So, you know, this is all playing out for a little inverse head and shoulders, which is starting to look good now. I'm going to draw in the neckline for you guys, so yeah, you can come back onto the ladders. Uh, thanks, uh, Paul and Johnny. So we're back onto the ladders now. And um, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this euro position and we're going to zoom in on the DAX again now. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this up to you. Yeah. Okay, so you should be able to see that now, nice and front and center. I don't want to ca cover too many of my ladders. You can see the very nice example of a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders. Now note, an inverse head and shoulders, yes, it's a pattern, okay, but it's more the price response that's, that's important, okay. We can see that we had a dip down on the cash and um, a little bit of a, a slow rebound. We then had a second attempt and the head was created with a V reversal, which is a very, very, very strong price action, okay. If you saw that on the ladder, very aggressive reversal, right. So we're going to use that information. Right, we, we've almost paid for that information. Remember, we got short there looking for an extension. Didn't make any money, took a small loss. So now we're going to use that information that we extracted and we're going to take advantage of it. Okay? So what we're going to do now is we can see our neckline is going to come in in and around that sort of 50 and a half area where it's just about where we stopped the last time. So what we're going to do is once we get above that 50 and a half, if we see some absorption, we see some buy side on the bid, we're going to look to buy it. Remember our target? Okay, now traditionally a lot of people say yes, okay, the target is 26 minus the headline is, you know, 30 ticks to the upside, that's awesome. Okay, really that's cool, if, if it gets there, that, that's brilliant. For me, uh, I've identified a key little spot up at 70s, so I'm going to put that in straight away, uh, and um, we're going to effectively target that 1, 2, 5, 70 area. Okay, so inverse shoulders, uh, inverse head and shoulders is in play now, let's... Let's actually play, let's see what it does. All right, remember note, technical pattern's one thing, executing and making money is altogether another. So note, we wanna see some absorption, we wanna see get it above those 15 and a halves, you know, maybe see the seller. I wanna actually see a seller there. I wanna see a seller selling it, but a buyer holding it. That's the important thing for this little head and shoulders to work out. Okay, in the meantime, let's just cover some of that. That can sit out. So above that 15 and a half now, let's see that buying. We want to see that buying. We're not going to just line to get in just because the chart says get in. Okay, that's a mugs game. Looking at the chart and just getting in, that's not that's not what it's about. Okay, we need to see that buying. We want to see that selling and then reloading from the buyer because that's going to give us our stop. The minute we can see that buyer, we can get in and we can put a stop in and that's what's key to this. 
Now for geopolitics, we've got Russian wires quoting the deputy foreign minister warned the US not to take any actual actions in Syria. Okay, so we can see a little bit of reloading here. So we're going to get in here now. We've got to stop here. Okay, notice we saw the buying come in at this 47 and a half. Let's see if he's still there. Okay, so we can see someone sold 47 and a half, 47 and a half. Let's see if that buy is going to go a little more aggressively now. Okay, so we still see the selling. And still see the selling. Okay, so no real reloading yet. No real reloading. As simple as that, guys. That's all we're looking for. Uh, we didn't get the reloading. We didn't quite get the trade like we wanted. And guess what? The DAX is all the way down. What's the damage? A couple of ticks. All right. Have we got it right? What are we looking for? We're looking for 30 ticks. Okay. That's what it's all about. It's about constantly navigating your way, finding little opportunities, uh, and making sure you're executing them uh, accordingly. So we're not going to give up on this yet altogether. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on this 50 and a half. See if we get another opportunity, add another bite at the carrot. Um, so that's the important thing. Remember, just blindly hitting and, and assuming uh, and preempting, that's that's not the game. Okay, preempting you know, is going to cost you a lot more money in the long run than uh, than, than not. So we don't want to preempt. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to try this again one more time. We want to see it get above those 51 and a halves, and we want to see if we can identify that buying. If we get that buying, we try it again. Nice tight stop. Again, still looking for that target of 70s. So if you guys have any questions, obviously, um, we've got another couple of minutes. Let's shoot those questions away. Um, I'll keep one eye on the questions and one eye on the DAX at the same time. And um, yeah, hopefully we can answer some of those questions. In which market, mate? Um, 51 and a half, 51 and a half, yeah. Just little inverse head and shoulders. Um, I think the fact that the, the stocks, it failed in the 3490s, went bit up very quickly. It reminds oh, me of that, yeah, I just think we might get a run up yeah. to the upside in the, the equities now. But it's just the timing on this, I'm going to try and, yeah. I think if that DAX can get about those 51 and a halves and, and someone can just put a step on the bid there, the, the problem with the DAX is because it's a little bit thinner, you know, you could... You, you, someone can absorb it, but he'll absorb it over a few, a few uh, more prices. Whereas um, the boon, the absorption tends to come over uh, less prices. Okay. So really interesting if you look at this DAX, we can see some real good absorption and we saw that 20 contracts into the fours, reloads, instantly hits the other 20 on the offer. So someone is accumulating and we can see a little bit of a buy side program coming into the market. You know, again another 12, so there is a buyer, yeah, he is holding the market. The question is we don't want him to hold it yet. Yeah. <laughs> we need him to hold it at higher prices. Okay, If he can hold it at higher prices, we can piggyback off him. Um, you know, if he holds it at lower prices, he might get hit and get taken a little bit lower and then buy it lower. Okay, that doesn't that doesn't present in itself uh, an opportunity. So yeah, we can see a buyer there, 44, 44 and a half. He's absorbing and he's hitting, but he's a little bit too passive now. We need him to turn a little bit more aggressive and then hopefully we can get stuck in. 
And so again, watch the 44s, still 21 bid. Um, we can see some really good absorption here. Again, 19 in front of him. So almost like a not, not quite a nice burger order, but definitely a buy side order in the market at the moment. Um, you know, just holding the market 44, 44 and a half. See what happens when he comes on to him again. Okay, so still a lot of reluctance. A lot of reluctance to actually hit the 22s. Mm. Okay. So let's keep an eye now. Coming back to those 51 and a half, let's see what happens. Okay, and what we said now, that buyer, we want to see him holding it higher up. So let's see that first bit of selling. Let's see where that buyer enters. Break point is 51 and a half, so, so we'll just see again. So we can see a 15 lot come in, but this buyer is playing games. What was very interesting was how he took that through. Um, very unusual, you very, very, very rarely see a buyer go that aggressively through it. You kind of tend to see them take the levels, so take the 51s, and then sort of shift up the bits, so shift up the reloading, which makes me think that you, know, you might get a 52s or a 51s. Yeah, that's why I'm a bit reluctant to be hitting too high here, yeah, but. It does look like I've missed a trick here, and we're going to get those 70s. And um, just unfortunate there, you know, the, the 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 reload buyer didn't quite come in uh, where we wanted it, um, which is a little bit unfortunate. But um, yeah, this is the game. Let's adjust that to a one. Alright, and uh, job done there. So we got the 70s, unfortunately, we didn't quite get the buy. Um, now again, you know, this is this is how you learn, you know, so obviously when it comes to trading sort of you know, price action in the DAX, I'm still relatively new, but thicker markets, you would you would generally, if we go back on that head and shoulders, you know, it's very unusual for him to take a straight bid through the 51s, which is a, a little bit sucky, um, but it, it is what it is, It's it's he's taken it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just pay attention on a little bit of a flick up here in the DAX. There's obviously going to be some stops in a minute. Um, you know, there's definitely some some shorts still in the market. So <coughs> any kind of a rush of blood here in the DAX, we, we're still happy to sell it. Um, but yeah, I think that's the important thing to take away from the session. Um, you know, you've got an example of a you know how an inverse head and shoulders looks. Most importantly, is that neckline. Okay, nice V reversal, very strong price action. You know, what that means going forward is that line, as you can see, I've put a big fat red line on that low. If we get anywhere nearby there today, tomorrow, in the next couple of days, uh, I'll be hitting pretty aggressively through that low. Um, you know, looking for a really big set of stops below that low. Um, uh, you know, and then equally, obviously, just, just debriefing on that. You know, we could see that price action, someone just reloading the 16, 17, not 16, 17, not around that 46, 47s before we just took a straight line. But, okay. So, um, cool, no, I'm guessing, let me just refresh this, guys, because I don't see any questions, but it might just be my browser. Um, probably my browser. Uh, okay. Um, just close that up. Okay, guys, it's uh, quarter two. Let's uh, let's wrap it up. Um, you know, 
be prepared um, be prepared over the next uh, couple of hours for volatility all right this is this is you have to stay now um, you know just just make sure you you're aware of what volatility means for you as a trader how you can take advantage of it um, you know I hope you've enjoyed the session you know, it's been a very DAX dominant session uh, why because well you know nice stop limit orders are working well in the DAX we can see you know when we've got the little inverse initials it's showing us little bits of opportunity to do here and there okay um, now if we did get back up to the high here and if we did come back in towards the high of the day around those tens 126.10 I will short for a swing trade okay so that's when I'll I'll sell the market and sit on it uh, you know, for as long as I need to to get to my reward, you know, back towards down, you know, to, towards the, the, the low of the day and hopefully the break of those stops. So, you know, important, apply the strategy based on the context of where the market is, okay? Sometimes breakouts are going to work well, sometimes swing trades are going to work well, okay? The art is knowing when to apply which. Right, good luck for the rest of the session, guys. Thank you for joining. Um, yeah, obviously, join me for the debrief this afternoon uh, where we'll go through some trade opportunities. Cool, have a good afternoon.